All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I want to go through a couple of comments here, and I want to focus on one particular comment here. Um, yeah, I got some great uh, comments this morning, um, uh, in particular about the the rapture. Uh, to me, it's odd that um, people would claim that there is no rapture. It's it's weird, but I uh, you know look I welcome that conversation. Okay, now Cheyenne Bowden says that no Jesus second coming in clouds is not judgment for his believers. All right, so apparently the Bible's not true, according to Cheyenne. All right. I mean, you're going to find out. You're going to find out different. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and everybody's going to know. And let me just show one verse here. I don't want to dismiss uh, these comments too quickly, right? So let's go to Luke chapter 21. And consider this. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven make no mistake about it when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven men's hearts will be failing them for fear and people are gonna know <laughs> no matter what you say no matter what you believe it doesn't matter. You can believe anything you want. But God has made us and all the creatures of the earth to know that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And it's judgment day. That's why people's hearts will be failing them for fear. There's no way to escape it. All right. And again, a rapture is a false man-made doctrine. Same thing. It's odd to me that, that people would say, It's odd that people would say that. Okay, so let's go. Let's go to Matthew 24. All right, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, <clears throat> excuse me, are all parallel chapters. And it's all um, the same event when Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And at the end of of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then he shall send his angels and they shall gather together his elect that's the rapture I don't know why make a big deal out of the fact that the that the word rapture is not in the Bible uh, why make <laughs> why make a big deal out of it really it's the same thing it's the same thing there's no possible way to make a difference between the rapture and the gathering together of the elect it's interesting to me those same people that say oh the rapture ain't in the Bible will then also on the other hand point to Greek and Hebrew words that are not in the Bible All right. it's unbelievable it's unbelievable really hey, people can't focus on the simple truth I mean what's going on here fellas here I am trying to make it real simple for you 
and you come in and you try to muddy up the water that's all you're doing Roman Catholicism that's the complete opposite of Christianity all right so the, the whole rapture doctrine the whole rapture doctrine comes from Jesus Christ himself and it stems from Adam the very beginning when the Lord God said unto the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel now if you understand that you should understand the rapture because we're going to be taken away from this wicked world and all evil is going to be done away with that's the prophecy of Genesis 3 you should we you know you should have been able to figure that out because that prophecy is told over and over and over again all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation it's what we put our hope into as Christians we're not putting our hope into anything else rapture happens after the first week of the tribulation that's not in the Bible anywhere but you're welcome to try to come up with something to support that idea that's <clears throat> I <laughs> and look if you want to go quote Daniel 9 please do it now I'll show you that Jesus already fulfilled the 70 weeks of Daniel chapter 9 the rapture is not the second coming rapture tribulation then second coming so yeah, that's unbelievable rapture here's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and here is the believers being lifted up to meet the Lord in the air that's Jesus coming so you don't have a, you have the second coming tribulation then third coming just from a logical standpoint your statement makes no sense and there's you know supporters you can support him all day long it doesn't make it true <laughs> nowhere in the Bible it says rapture it says caught up but that doesn't mean rapture yeah it does rapture and being caught up is the same thing there's no way you can justify that statement right there no way there's no possible way to differentiate the rapture from the getting caught up in the air to meet the Lord not possible hoping to be wheat not terror not a terror well, you ought to know. You ought to have that absolute certainty that you're saved. You really should. Why have any doubts at all? People have been having this discussion for centuries upon centuries. And I'm hoping you're dead wrong. But I'm also not foolish enough to be closed-minded and small-minded to assume that you're not right. That being said, if what you're claiming is true, that would certainly explain the scripture that says before the return of Christ that there will be a falling away from the faith. Because if this were to happen and there isn't going to be a pre-trib rapture, then that would explain why many people 
would turn away from the faith of God because that would cause people to be sore, so to speak, at God for not getting them out before it starts. But the argument discussion of what's called the blessed hope would imply that there is, in fact, going to be an escape of all things. So, I will just say lastly that I'm obviously hoping and praying that there will be a pre-trib rapture. But also just pray I'm strong enough to keep the faith. If there's a, not a pre-trib, uh, thank you for your message. Okay, so thank you. I appreciate that. Now, the pre this pre trip that's not in the Bible. They make a big deal out of well, rapture not in the Bible, and pre trip's not in the Bible either. It's weird to me that people make a big deal. I know what you're talking about. You're making the claim, or you're uh, echoing the claim that we will be drawn out of this world before we face any sort of tribulation. That's that's not in the Bible. I don't know why people would listen to men preach that idea. We've got the simple truth in the scripture. All right. So I, I commented a couple of verses here, and let me just go over them. Uh, John 16, verse 33, these, Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world... Ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Uh, it is foolish to use such terms, in my, in my opinion, as pre-trib. There is a pre-wrath rapture. Okay. At the end of the world. Where we're drawn up into the air to meet the Lord and the Lord stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever and this is taught from Genesis to Revelation now consider this Luke 18 and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man comes shall he find faith on the earth consider the days of Noah I in my estimation there was probably 25 billion people three times more people on the earth than there are today yet only eight people were saved consider the cities of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities roundabout had to been millions millions of people and out of all those cities there was not even ten righteous. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Will there even be eight souls that are saved remaining on the earth? Now, why does Jesus come back? It's because there are so few people saved that if he let things play out the way they're playing out, there would be nobody saved. But the Lord has shortened those days for the elect's sake. Alright, so it's very clear that there are fewer and fewer people saved every day and it's getting worse and worse that's why Jesus come, is coming back there's no other reason for this world to come to an end if things were getting better and better 
there'd be no reason at all for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. Now, it's interesting, <clears throat> when he's asked about the, um, the sign of his coming and of the end of the world, the very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And that's obviously clearly happening today, more so than ever before. Rapture and return are two different events. I mean, I could stay in Matthew 24 all day. Jesus comes in clouds of heaven, and we are caught up together, raptured. Jesus returns, we are raptured. It couldn't be any clearer. Some preach a belief that the rapture takes place before the tribulation. Then after that, Jesus comes. The rapture can only happen when Jesus comes. The idea that people are raptured and the Lord isn't here? Yeah, it's nonsense. Man, it doesn't. It's devoid of logic. Right? I mean, you got Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven, and we got the believers being gathered up, caught up together. So the, the rapture cannot, can only take place when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's, uh, it, it, it's odd, isn't it? Isn't it weird that people would teach things that are like as if they have no common sense whatsoever no ability to use logic and reasoning and it's so simple Jesus comes after the tribulation when he comes he raises the dead believers in new bodies at the same time the living believers have their bodies transformed that's clearly what we read in First Thessalonians four. I mean, it cannot be it can it cannot be written any simpler. It really can't. And to argue against this it makes no sense. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the arch angel. And with the trump of God, <laughs> you're reading exact parallels here with Matthew 24. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and they shall gather together his elect. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Right? Gathered together, his elect caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this is interesting here, verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Well, you can't comfort one another with these words if you're teaching this nonsense, ridiculousness, that the rapture and the second coming are different events. How in the world did we as people get so stupid? Really? All right, so where am I at here? There was a comment. Oh, here we go. From Gary Suple, or Gary's, Gary's Upley. 5092. He says... Uh, uh, the rapture is the mark of the beast, my friends. See Rapture 1985, Shepherd Student. I'm assuming that's Arnold Murray, because when I did a search on it, that's what came up. 
and I did a, I looked through the transcript and did not see uh, any correlation between the rapture and Mark of the Beast in that video and okay so then Gary replies and he says how about day of Jacob's trouble one two eagles or eagle wings ministry all right so I, I looked up eagle wing ministries and I don't see anything um, it's a disabilities ministry that I could that I could tell yeah, I'm not gonna try too hard to find it but you can um, leave a link and it'll go to review but I can I can approve it um, what I did find is this right here from the Shepherd's Chapel Arnold Murray where he talks about the day of Jacob's trouble okay so this is interesting I'm gonna walk through this video all right. But before I do that, I want to let's do it this way. I want to show you first of all that this f phrase or term or whatever it's mentioned one time in the entire Bible and it's in Jeremiah 30 okay and so I'm gonna read Jeremiah 30 for you and I want you to put your seatbelt on and brace for this okay it's my opinion that if people actually read Jeremiah 30 It ought to be crystal clear that this is talking about the end of the world. The very same thing that we're reading about in Matthew 24. Alright, consider this. I mean, I'm hoping, I guess I'm just hoping that you, you're familiar with Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Jesus talks about all these things that are happening all right and he's all he's basically saying is there's gonna be a lot of deception a lot of evilness a lot of wickedness all right and things are gonna get worse and worse but don't be troubled don't be afraid all right He's just telling us, hey, these things are going to happen. All right, but let's go to, <clears throat> excuse me, let's go to Luke 21, because this is also the same thing. <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so in Luke 21, when you see all these things happening, uh, I, I should say when you see um, you know the sun being dark and the moon not giving your light when you see these signs in heaven when these things begin to come to pass and then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh All right because this is going to happen and it's going to be good very good for those of us that are saved all right so in Jake in uh, Jeremiah 30 and it talks about Jacob's trouble it's what we're going through today now I don't want to get into all the false false doctrines all the and all these ideas that we Christians are not the nation of Israel. We are not God's children. That we are not the children of God. We are not the sons of God. I mean, it, it's again, it's so stupid. There is, there is no two groups of people that are going to be saved. 
flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nobody's ever been saved for simply bo being born of the flesh. Nobody. And we that are Christ are the children of Israel. We are the children of Abraham. You know, John 8, there's a great big discussion on that. And Jesus makes it clear that those that were from a direct physical lineage to Abraham were not the children of Abraham because they did not the works of Abraham. Or did not, you know, they sought to kill the Lord Jesus. Um, they were children of the devil. Okay? In other words, they didn't have the faith of Abraham. Now, consider this. All right. In Galatians 3, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. This is simple, straightforward stuff. Even a child ought to be able to understand this. He saith not, and his seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So the seed of Abraham is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There's not two groups of people being saved. There's one. That's it. Either you're in or you're out. That's it. And, uh, you know, a lot of fault. I mean, didn't I just show you in Matthew 24? Take heed that no man deceive you. Well, there's all kinds of deceivers out there. For many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many you shall be hated of all nations. Many false prophets shall deceive many. It's, I mean, this, really, this is what it's all about. The craziness of the deceivers. It's worse and worse. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived why why would you well here's the thing if you don't know what the bible says there are men out there to take advantage of you and they will take advantage of you if you don't know your bible if you're going to put your trust in men rather than what god says you will be deceived really and you should be, because you're trusting in man, not God. It's only right that you're deceived. And here we are in a world full of people that are deceived. So let me try to make this real simple. In my opinion, if you actually read Jeremiah 30, it should become clear. The time of Jacob's trouble is now, and it's in reference to the end of the world that will come shortly. Okay? The Okay, starting in verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. This is clearly talking about... New Jerusalem. Okay. So let's establish that. Back in Galatians 4. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Our holy city of God is above. It's not on earth. Alright, so when you're reading this, you 
you got to understand these things that you know that are especially written in the New Testament the New Testament makes things much clearer for us to understand All right, there, there's nothing hidden in the Old Testament that's not already revealed in the New Testament okay you can almost you can make the claim vice versa as well okay every because we're essentially being taught the same thing all throughout the Bible all right, so when I will bring again the captivity of, of my people Israel and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it this is talking about the promised land which is the city God which is above and these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah for thus saith the Lord we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with child wherefore wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness alas for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of Jacob's trouble for he shall be saved out of it Wow for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened the great day of the Lord is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven <clears throat> there will be no day like it the Sun will be dark and the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken you can't compare that with any sort of worldly trouble you know whatever you might see on CNN and Fox News it won't even compare to what will happen on the great day of the Lord there's no comparison do you want to see you I mean you're that you want to say that CNN is gonna broadcast a troublous time greater than this the Lord coming in the clouds of heaven are you out of your cotton picking mind you don't have any understanding whatsoever if that's what you're gonna say this is obvious obviously the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and he shall be saved out of it the time of Jacob's trouble is leading up to it for it shall come to pass in that day saith the Lord of hosts that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bounds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up unto them who's gonna do this who's gonna break the yoke from off thy neck and burst thy bonds the Lord God Almighty okay it's not gonna be CNN it's not gonna be Dan rather it's gonna be the Lord on the Lord's day when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven this should be obvious therefore fear thou not O servant O my servant Jacob saith the Lord neither be dismayed O Israel for lo I will save thee from afar and what do you think this is man what do you think this is you don't think Jesus knew about this you think this is something else you think this is one thing and this is another thing man you're failing to understand you're revealing yourself as somebody void of understanding you're revealing yourself is pretty stupid is what you're doing okay
because this is obviously the same thing. There's not 20 different ends of the worlds. There's not 20 different returns of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's one. It's not a new idea. It's been prophesied from Genesis to Revelation, okay? Therefore fear not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. All right? That's after the end of the world. We learn, we learn about that all uh, throughout, really, all throughout. Uh, that's what we're putting our hope in. A better world, a new world, a new heaven, a new earth. That's We're not putting our hope in anything else. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Well, there's not another Savior. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nobody else there to save you. It's Jesus. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a full end of thee. <laughs> How can you not comprehend this? It's very simple, straightforward stuff, isn't it? But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy case. I'm sorry. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten me, that they seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction, thy sorrows incurable, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again in the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on its dwelling places, and, sh and the city shall be builded up upon her heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. This is clearly when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and we are transformed into our glorified body. And there's a new city of God that comes down from heaven with a new heavens and a new earth. It's crystal clear. There's no other way to look at this. Truthfully, should be it should be simple. I mean, once you understand the Bible and you go back and you read Jeremiah 30, this makes it's easy. It's simple stuff, man. It's simple. It's not rocket science. The only t time confusion comes in is when you're putting your trust in what men say, but the Scripture is very simple. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. So real quickly, if you don't mind. Let me see. I always have trouble finding the exact spot here. Oh... I guess, yeah, for some reason I don't know. Right there it is. I'm way off on whatever I'm thinking here. All right, then, okay, so you, we read about the 12,000 of the 12 tribes. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, a number 
that no man can number. Uh, I'm sorry. A great multitude which no man can number. Right? This is talking about those of us that would be saved. All right? And then this is parallel right here in Jeremiah 30. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. I will glorify them. Right, that's what we're putting our hope into is being transformed into our glorified body. Okay. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. All right, so there's a coming judgment day for the unsaved. That's echoed all throughout the Bible. It's not a new thing. It's not a standalone verse. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. And again, we can go to Revelation 21. I want to speed this up a little bit because I still want to go through that video with Arnold. I want to go through eight minutes of it, <clears throat> right? And um, let's see, what am I looking for? It, okay, so this is it. In Revelation 21, He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. All right, talking about us. This stuff is paralleled all throughout the Bible. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he has done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart, in the latter days ye shall consider it now doggone it let's do it this way it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked this is prophesied all throughout the bible I mean I, in Genesis 3 it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel Right. In Psalm 110, the, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right in 1 Corinthians 15, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Right. In Revelation 3. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Revelation 20, and fire comes down from heaven, or I'm sorry, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. So this is prophesied from Genesis to Revelation all throughout the Bible. It's the same thing. It's the end of the world. This world's coming to an end. All right. So it's amazing how simple all this is. Once you have simple understanding of the simple scripture it all makes simple sense it really does it's confused men that gather confusion and spread it out but the word of God is very simple Psalm 19, verse 7, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Stuff is very, very, very simple. 
but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm telling you, this stuff is simple. There's one requirement, though. You must have faith. Without faith, you won't have any understanding whatsoever. Without faith, it's impossible to understand anything. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Why? Because they don't believe. You, if you don't believe, you're not going to understand. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, it's, that's all about faith. It's always been about faith. It's always been about faith. And if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, how do you expect to understand the Bible that you hold in your hands? It's amazing. It really is. People don't understand the power of faith. It's incredible. Have you never read the scripture? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It really is. For whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Alright, so let's go. Let's get into this and I'll end it on this. I'll just walk you through eight minutes of it. Shepherd's Chapel, welcome to this family Bible study. Oh, praise God, we've been waiting on you. We're ready to get into a new study. I'm All right, really he fired up. I like it. I like the fire. Yeah, I like the fire right here. This guy fired up. Now listen to him. Shepherd's Chapel, welcome to this family Bible study. Oh, praise God, we've been waiting on you. We're ready to get into a new study. I really enjoy Hot diggity. the specials that we do between books. Really enjoyed visiting with you last evening about Iran and Iraq and how those that <laughs> particular nonsense. situation is our father's plan and his schedule right on time, naturally. As it's written, so it comes to pass. He's talking about stuff he saw on TV. <laughs> Telling you, you gotta stay away from a TV. While we're in between books, I had I've had a about four requests for a tape having to do with Jacob's trouble. And on top of that, I've had... Yeah, uh, let me just, once again, bring up the fact that Jacob's trouble is mentioned one time in the entire Bible. It's the, the phrase, Jacob's trouble. Now, we can relate it, we can connect the dots to everything all throughout the Bible. But what these confused men teach... Is something different that I can't even understand it myself. I don't know how many questions concerning the tribulation or my statement the two tribulation. Yeah, okay, so first of all, there's no tribulation other than the tribulation that we're going through in the world today. But be of good cheer, the Lord Jesus has overcome the world. And so we got somebody like this claiming two tribulations. I mean, you're taking bat, turd, insanity and doubling up on it. All right. Let me, let's see. Oh, wait a second. Maybe there is two tribulations. No. No. Nope. 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 I just wanted to show you that there's not two tribulations. It's not mentioned anywhere at all. Oh, wait a second. Oh, no. That's not it either. <laughs> just making stuff up now. You're turning the Word of God, the Word of Truth, into a comic book. And why? To make yourself appear more enlightened? Is that it? Because what you're saying here, it's not supported in the Bible at all. So we're going to combine the day of Jacob's trouble and the two tribulations all into one. Wow, and the two tribulations, that's not even in the Bible. Wow. Study. We may 
stay on it the rest of this week. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. But I hope you enjoy it, and we probably will, we may take another week doing special studies before we get back into comic book, book studies of our Father's Word. What does Jacob's trouble have to do with you? Jacob in the Hebrew tongue is always used concerning... Um, right there. That anytime somebody points to a foreign language, that tells everybody that they do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. He doesn't believe this. This is not a Hebrew Bible. This is an English Bible. He don't believe it. That's why he's pointing to a foreign language. If he believed this was the Word of God directly from God, there would be no reason at all to point to a foreign language. None. Well, sorry, he don't believe it. That's why he's saying, oh, the Hebrew says this. Turning the natural seed of Israel, which means what? It means the oh, children. Yeah, okay, the children. so I probably asked him talking, but he, he talks about the natural seed of Israel. And I just showed you already that the natural seed of Israel is of no relevance at all. Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. The seed of Abraham is Christ. It's not... Nobody's saved for simply being born of the flesh. In John chapter 3, That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Talking about being born of the Spirit. Children in the flesh, so to speak, but also with the spiritual connotation, applying wherever it will according to what the subject and object... Jeez. Six, man, he just passes that off as if uh, just normal talk, just normal. You know, just one well, We're just making it up, whatever. I mean, you might as well just said, "Well, we're, we're, I'm just going to make up whatever," and to hell with the truth. That he might as well just have said. He might as well have said that just now. Listen, children in the flesh, so to speak but also with the spiritual connotation, applying wherever it will according to what the subject... Jesus. you got to question people like this, man. Do you have any idea what you're talking about? I want to play it again and again and again, but somebody will get mad at me. Subject and object is in the scripture. This applies to you. It applies to today, for the day of that trouble is very near. Even, I might say, at the door. Yeah, is he on dope or something? What? I, I gotta show this. I don't know if I did this or not. These things have I spoken unto you, then in the world you might have peace. And the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I said that all goofy. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. If you don't have tribulation in your life right now, there's, you're doing it wrong. As we see this generation, the generation of that parable of the fig tree, the year 1948. Okay, okay. all right. So <clears throat> what he's saying is that those people that full-on reject the Lord Jesus Christ are God's people. And by saying that they're God's people, then you're saying that those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are not God's people. This is deranged lunacy. Obviously, these people that teach this stuff completely void of understanding. No understanding whatsoever. And, you know, it just makes me wonder. Now, I don't want to be accusatory here. Matthew 7, whereby, I'm sorry, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. You're teaching Judaism right here, Arnold Murray. You're teaching Judaism and not Christianity. Gets a lot of gray hair on it by this time. 
and we see speedily prophecy fulfilled speedily. daily, keeping up with current events. Watching CNN and Fox News, and MSN, and MSN, CB or whatever. I don't even know. What you mean. And those things. CBS, that, uh, Dan Rather, would, Peter Jennings. That was pretty fast, wasn't it? I mean, it can just block you right out. So, as we continue, uh, we're going to start with Jeremiah chapter 30. So we'll start with verse 6. We ask a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Yeshua Messiah is not his name. There's only one name under heaven given. There's only one name under heaven. Only one name under heaven. Oh, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. There is, okay, so there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's um, well, of course, Arnold Murray doesn't believe what the Bible says. The only name that we can be saved by is Jesus. It's the only name, Jesus Christ. There is no, there is salvation, neither, oh, where, where am I at here? For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's Jesus. What, what is ya, Yakashuka Matkasai? Is that Japanese or something? Christ, amen. Let's identify from this prophecy the announcement of that day of trouble so that we can fix the time. May we? Okay. So we can fix the time. What the H-E double hockey sticks is he talking about? Going with it. Chapter 30 and verse 6. And it reads, Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Question. Well, I've never known a man that did. Certainly haven't. Wow. In wow. The, after the natural order of... That... Things, naturally, it is a woman with a womb that is that bears children. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? We're talking about tribulation. As a matter of fact, the travail mentioned in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 concerning the consummation of the end of this age, it is that travail is the same word as labor pains in the Greek. There it is. I don't believe anything. I don't believe the Bible that I'm looking at, that I got my finger on, that I have on my desk, that I hold in my hands. I don't believe that Bible. So, therefore, I'm going to point to a foreign language that nobody understands. Right? There's something wrong with these people. They just reveal themselves boldly and plainly that they do not believe the Bible they preach from. There's no reason at all to point to the Greek. If you believe the Bible you're preaching from is directly from God. We'll understand that better perhaps in a moment. Um, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Now, you're not going to have it on your character generator, but so we definitely fix this. I'm going to go a couple of more verses, and I'm going to read it right out. Character For it shall generator? For in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke off thy neck, and will burst thy bounds, and, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. I'm going to free my people. That is to say, those Christian nations, no one is going to shackle them anymore. But they shall serve the Lord their God, David their king, whom I shall... Christian nations? That's an odd statement. 
because there is only one nation. All right, let's go to First Peter chapter two. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, and holy nation. It's not talking about United States. It's not talking about Russia. It's not talking about China. It's talking about the holy nation of God, which are those of us that are born of God, those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll raise up unto them. In other words, he's coming back. When then is the day of Jacob's trouble? The last day. And those days leading up to the end of this age, that is to say, those things that consummate the end of this age. Now, as uh, in the last uh, lecture, we're going to okay, go back. So the consummation, technically, is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are transformed. When we are lifted up into the air, that's the consummation. And all evil is done away with, but I, I'm, I'm being I'm being picky. Back to some of the simple, the most simple basics in Christianity. That sermon taught from the Mount concerning those things that do consummate the end of this age. What is the Jacob's trouble? Well, naturally, it's the one he's going to burst the bounds off of their neck, Satan. When Satan, as the Antichrist, is is uh, kicked uh, he's kicked loose from our people and the deception is no more the greatest error taught by ministers today wait for it is that there is only one tribulation there it is there's nothing at all in the bible to support his idea of two tribulations yet this man calls this the greatest error that preachers are teaching today wow for there are indeed two tribulations and many ministers compound the error of only teaching one tribulation by teaching a rapture theory to go along with it, the first. Let's see, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. All right, so we could do it this way. All right, so the rapture theory. All right, well, it didn't come about till couple hundred years ago and people are buying this stuff and it's ridiculous and can't believe anybody would believe in the rapture theory oh uh, let's see well, the rapture theory behold I will show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed shall be raised shall be raised okay when this uh, corruptible shall put on incorruption this mortal put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory there is no more death all right i already walked you through this one the lord shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect this dumb dumb rapture theory <laughs> and that leads people straight into satan's camp That Jesus leads people straight into Satan's camp. I don't see any other way to look at that. Unfortunately. Because they have believed this fairy tale that came into being in the year 1830 by Margaret MacDonald in Ireland. 
All right, so Margaret MacDonald is that actually the one that wrote the Bible, apparently, according to Arnold Murray. Or in Scotland, rather. And then rather was picked, later was picked up by the brethren and later, later brought to this nation, that is to say the Americas, by the brethren. And now it's taught in 95% or, percent or more of the churches in America today. Well, don't you think that it might make you unpopular if that percentage is teaching it for you to teach against it? Well, it might, but I'm not out to win any popularity contest. I'm in the business of teaching my father's word. Well, what is your father's word? Because you, obviously, you pointed at you, the, this book and then referenced the foreign language. So you obviously do not believe this book. And as it is written, that's the way I'll teach it. Where, where is it written at? Can I see what you're looking at? Because it's not this. You already pointed to the foreign language. And uh, like it or lump it, it will come to pass in that way, exactly as it's written. What, what will? The two tribulations? No, Nobody getting raptured? Well, if you consider uh, the tribulation that we're going through now is, is this, you know, the, the tribulation of being in this world, and then the second tribulation would be the wrath of God, and you consider he's preaching no rapture, all right, so that means he won't be raptured, he won't be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, does this make sense now, why he's preaching no rapture? Yeah, there won't be a rapture for those that are not saved. There will be two tribulations for those that are not saved, except the second tribulation will be the wrath of God and the second death. So therefore, it's important that you know these two tribulations, and believe it or not, the answer lies within the day of Jacob's trouble. And we're going to go to a chapter that is so familiar that I would be very disappointed if half of my students couldn't quote it verbatim. And I'm talking about Mark chapter 13. Uh, this, I, I gotta do what this. What is Mark I'm chapter 13? This. It's the sixth This seal. is unbelievable. Listen. Listen to this. I'm going to go to a chapter that is so familiar that I would be very disappointed if half of my students listen listen to this then the day of Jacob listen trouble. and we're going to go to a chapter that is so familiar that I would be very disappointed if half of my students couldn't quote it verbatim and I'm talking then why is he looking for it if he's disappointed in his students that could not quote it verbatim And he can't quote it verbatim. Otherwise, why is he looking for it? <laughs> wow. Talking about Mark chapter 13. What is Mark chapter 13? It's the six seals. The seven, to be more specific. In other words, when you cover the six and the seven seals of the book of Revelation... You've got them right here in Mark 13 and Matthew 24. There are seven events that shall come to pass that consummate the end of this earth age, which brings you into that tribulation known as Jacob's day of trouble. What is Jacob's day of trouble? It's the day that the false father is here instead of our true father. The day that instead of Jesus, which is Greek properly translated to English for Antichrist. It doesn't mean against, it's instead. Greek properly translated to English for Antichrist. It doesn't mean against, it's instead of. Alright, so according to Arnold Murray, the Antichrist is not against Christ. He's just another Christ. Instead of Jesus Christ, you have the Pope in Rome. It's just another, instead of. Instead of having Jesus, you can have the Pope in Rome. 
It's not against Jesus Christ. The, the, the devil and Satan and the Antichrist, they're not against Jesus. They're good guys. According to Arnold Murray in the Shepherd's Chapel. Now I hope you start looking at these guys in a different light. And see them for who they truly are. And that is men that lack understanding.